Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. The BRICS Economic Alliance is reportedly set to create a central bank of its own in order to issue its native currency. So the BRICS nations apparently coming out with their own central bank. This one courtesy of Michael Branch here from the Watcher Guru blog. The BRICS Economic Alliance is reportedly set to create a central bank of their own. This is coming from Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister, Sergei Ryabkov, recently noted that the creation of such a bank as central uh, to the eventual creation of the BRICS currency. So he was asked about the ongoing development of the BRICS common currency, specifically RIA Novosti was asked about the status of the project. In response, uh, Ryabakov uh, identified the issues facing the continued development and some of the most urgent steps. And so uh, I'm guessing here, uh, creating their own central bank, I guess they do need a central body to be able to issue this currency. So throughout the year, the BRICS Economic Alliance has been developing their own currency. Indeed, the collective has been discussing those prospects to enhance its de-dollarization efforts further. Uh, yet there has been some emerging concerns regarding the project and when it could finally come to fruition. And maybe this is why we're seeing, uh, you know, these countries leveraging DLT technology and trading in their own common currencies uh, at this moment in time. Here's a quote. I would not say that this idea has been shelved, says Ryabakov. Uh, this is what he said in a press conference, but its implementation, as we all understand, involved, amongst other things, such aspects as the creation of a single issuance center, the creation of a central bank that sets a common basic discount rate. So, uh, you know, they need the infrastructure surrounding, uh, I guess, all the logistics with regards to a central bank digital currency, or rather with a uh, central bank currency common currency for trade. Um, what I'm assuming is it's going to be backed by something harsh, a hard commodity of some sort, probably something like gold or a basket of commodities rather than just promises and dreams. Uh, so they are working on it, but there are still uh, some hurdles to jump. Specifically, he stated that the 15 year old alliance uh, that has doubled in size through recent expansion. Therefore, he claimed the block is hardly ready for such steps and experiments. However, he also noted that this does not uh, now mean that the idea has been postponed. So I guess, uh, you know, the BRICS nations do have to be patient before they get their own native currency. So I wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Another one here, guys, from Michael Branch. BlackRock has issued a major warning about the U.S. dollar. So in conjunction with, uh, you know, what's going on over there with the BRICS nations, we're seeing this de-dollarization continue in 2024. Uh, as BlackRock has now issued a major warning about the US dollar. So, you know, we've got companies like BlackRock warning us. It just kind of piles more on top of this narrative uh, to suggest that the US dollar is fledgling and that we are in trouble. According to the BlackRock report, the bond market has seen some volatility amid uncertainty around interest rates by the Fed's uh, monetary policy, of course. And on Friday, the 10-year Treasury yield briefly fell below 4.5%. The drop came following a weak jobs report for April and a surprise tick higher in unemployment rates. And guys, here's a quote. It's time to start migrating back to fixed income, especially with yields at these levels. This is coming from Steve Lapley, global co-head of iShares Fixed Income ETFs and co-author of BlackRock's paper. Uh, with the Fed still working in uncertainty, the market is nearly impossible to timetable correctly. So they're suggesting that, uh, you know, it's too difficult to predict what's going to happen next in the market. Bonds have historically delivered the strongest performance during hold periods, according to BlackRock. Hence, the investment managers advise uh, using bonds to protect U.S. dollars. It is a very compelling opportunity for investors to get their fixed income side of the portfolio right, says uh, Lapley. Furthermore, BlackRock recommends using a bond fund or an ETF. So that's their recommendation. The company said investors should use a holistic approach, which can include a mix of both to get diversified exposure cheaper for their assets. So sounds as though they're uh, kind of in damage control. We have been seeing a tumultuous year for the US dollar. Uh, and you know, this is in part, as they're saying, due to BRICS intervention. I mean, it's going to hurt the US dollar quite a bit once this BRICS native currency is released, you know, especially if they start doing a lot more trade in this BRICS currency. The US dollar has seen benefits by being used as the world reserve currency. And, uh, you know, that era is slowly coming to an end as we're uh, as we're quickly seeing. So and yeah, and the other thing is, you know, in the past, we've seen these uh, world reserve currencies kind of with this slow down, uh, the slow decline over like a decade or two decades, it takes for a you know complete transition. But now because of DLT technology, guys, I have a feeling this is going to happen a lot quicker. So going to keep an eye out and consider these updates moving forward. Again, wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Another great one here from Michael with regards to VeChain, guys. They're powering sustainable payments in Europe whilst tokenizing solar energy with their latest grant 
from SolarWise. VeChain continues to build and grow as it onboards more and more sustainable projects onto their green blockchain network. The latest of these partnerships include the onboarding of VeChain's latest grant recipient, SolarWise. In detail, SolarWise is a project working to tokenize solar energy. Specifically, this project is helping to advance uh, the UN SDGs through clean energy, NFT technology, and blockchain power. The project is thrilled to announce that VeChain has approved their grant. By being granted this permit, SolarWise is powering its vision to foster a sustainable future with solar NFTs. Thus, the support provided by VeChain aligns perfectly in terms of advancing their mutual mission of advancing sustainability and real-world assets. So, uh, you know, one of these shining stars, I think, in the world of the global elites, you know, they focus on these uh, types of projects and want to bring them in the mix as, uh, you know, the pinnacle of what we want the world to be according to them, the ones with the power, the ones with the money. And so VeChain, the VeChain project is falling right in line. I mean, whether you like it or not, uh, it's just the reality of the matter. VeChain is a great cryptocurrency. I hold it both in my legacy portfolio and in the $15,000 plus portfolio at patreon.com slash working money channel. Yes, the portfolio has now grown from $10,000. I thought I was only going to be putting in $10,000, but uh, you know, I've recently uh, acquired some more capital that I decided to deploy into the portfolio. So now it's up to over $15,000 and VeChain is part of that portfolio that you can find at patreon.com slash working money channel. Price uh, pretty attractive right now, just under four cents per coin. We did see it go up uh, to close to five and a half cents in the most recent pump. And, uh, you know, even since the bottom here, when we did see VeChain dip down back in June of last year, up to that high, we're seeing a 300% increase. But guys, this is just the beginning. An all-time high for VeChain, close to 28 cents, uh, was seen last bull run. So I think there's a lot more opportunity for this particular cryptocurrency. And again, it's one of those double-edged sword coins, uh, similar to HBAR, a high flyer in a spec run, but also has got that real-world utility behind it. So interesting to see how VeChain does this time around. In this morning's video, I showed you guys a clip of David Schwartz explaining how, you know, the XRPL is for the people and the developers behind it. Expanding on that a little bit, I wanted to bring you guys this from Krypton Writer. The XRP ledger is about to level up. So a lot of different proposals, discussions, and developments going on right now. Here's a high level summary of what is in the pipeline. And I'm not gonna read the full thing for you. It is an 18 page thread here, but just some of the use cases now being developed. Okay, DID is for sharing and controlling your own individual digital identity on the XRP ledger. This is one of the main ones that is occurring. And uh, Krypton Riker here showing us a flow chart just to explain that. Uh, so again, just gonna go over some of the topics here. The X chain bridge, he gives the status here. This allows for cross chain asset transfers across distinct independent ledgers, such as the mainnet or the XRP ledger or side chains, an EVM sidechain, for example, uh, price oracles. This implements a native mechanism that retrieves off chain data from an Oracle provider for usage on the XRPL. Uh, we've got pay, uh, pay chain and escrow for tokens. So this would allow trust balances or tokens to be used in payment channels and escrows. Uh, DNFTs. Okay. So again, he gives us the status of all these projects here. So voting, you know, a poll request, this one is in draft status. Uh, in contrast to immutable regular NFTs, dynamic NFTs allow for integration of attributes that may be modifiable. Uh, then we have XRPL plugins, experimental functionality that allows developers to experiment with rippled transactions in dev language other than C++. Uh, and then hooks, that is still in draft, would allow the XRP ledger to take advantage of lightweight, non-EVM-based smart contract functionalities. Uh, we know a lot about the hooks project. Manage single token or single asset tokenized pool expands the XRPL DeFi features to include single asset tokenized pools that serve many purposes and are administered by an account acting as a delegate. So that's another interesting one there. Charge, uh, similar to the functions currently proposed by batch transactions, this would create an explicit way to charge an extra, uh, an extra cost while submitting a transaction. Uh, then we got options, an advanced financial instrument well known in TradeFi that gives buyers the right or obligation to buy or sell an asset at the predefined price within the same given period. Uh, atomic batch transactions. So, you know, a lot of this stuff uh, can work in conjunction with some of these other functionalities, but I guess they're all uh, separate projects technically. Uh, this allows the grouping of up to eight transactions into a single unit to allow for uh, simple smart contract like automation. Then we've got sponsored fees and reserves. 
abstracts one of the most major hurdles of XRPL adoption by allowing users to relay transactions to the platform or other accounts. Uh, then the lending protocol, of course, allows for native decentralized lending on the XRP ledger. NF token or NF token escrows, yes. Uh, it allows the users to move the ownership of an NFT to an escrow contract in addition to XRP if it's locked up. So all these little things here, guys, and in summary, new proposals and discussions are now taking place and uh, they also involve compliance, smart contracts, automation or optional fees, tra uh, TradFi or DeFi, expanding features, side chains, and uh, better use experience or UX. So this is now the updated, uh, a great updated synopsis here from Krypton Riker of what is going on on the XRP ledger. I wanted to thank him for bringing that to our attention because, you know, we as XRP hodlers, you know, it's, I think it's important to understand what's, what's being developed. I mean, do I care in detail about all these little things? I don't care personally. I'm about how XRP is going to make me money and what my strategy is to cash out of, uh, well, XRP and other cryptocurrencies. That's why I started the Patreon. But it is good, you know, if you do hold a cryptocurrency, especially if you plan on holding it for the long term, which I do plan on doing with my XRP, I do plan on holding a portion for the long term and some for the shorter term, right? I'm going to be trading some in this spec market to understand why uh, it's valuable. I wonder, uh, understand at least where it could go in the future. And this is why, you know, we talk about these things. These things are important uh, to the detail that I find them important. Meh. You know, I, I, some people obviously find the details more interesting than I do. And uh, I don't know. I'm sure some of you guys are the same. Put it down in the comment section. But at the end of the day, guys, it's about making money. That's why I started Working Money Channel and also why I urge you guys, if you want to see what I'm trading this time around, to join the Patreon at patreon.com slash workingmoneychannel. So a great update here from Krypton Writer. Wanted to thank him for posting that. David Schwartz even admitted that he has been algorithm trading for the last 30 plus years. He just admitted this at uh, the Las Vegas event this past weekend. This is massive news because it does really explain how valuable algorithm trading really is. Listen to this. I've been trading Forex and, and, autom and doing, doing uh, early versions of like AI trading bots in different markets for more than 30 years now, just as something that I've always thought was fun. This really is just right in the side of the space that, of what I think is exciting. And I'll just share a little bit of the reason why I think it's exciting. Um, as you know, digital assets are extremely volatile. Like they move. Uh, and there's logical economic reasons why that should be impossible. You should, you would not expect, for example, if you thought Bitcoin was going to be $50,000 tomorrow, nobody would sell Bitcoin for $49,000 today. They would just wait till tomorrow. They would borrow money if they had to. Like, it is illogical to have the amount of volatility that we have. People should behave differently than they do in response to that volatility, and objectively, they don't. And so it's interesting to me to see these sort of hacks. What the AMM does is it turns volatility into yield. It's an, a volatility harvesting algorithm. And really, that's what exchanges are. If you look at an exchange, like a centralized exchange, like Kraken or Coinbase, you'll notice their trade volumes go up with volatility, and their revenue goes up with trade volumes. They're volatility harvesting businesses. And it's just amazing to me that no matter how much volatility people harvest, there still seems to be no shortage of it, right? Like that's fascinating to me. Like mathematically, that shouldn't be the case. Like we should be using up the vol. If, the more volatility there is, the more people who can build businesses that convert the volatility into money. When you convert volatility into money, you do reduce the volatility. So why are we, is there an endless supply of volatility? It, it's, it's quite, it, it's, it's intellectually fascinating to me. And so that's why I'm more interested in this than like I objectively should be. I think David Schwartz is onto something there. Maybe why we have seen a lot of wash trading in the past. Uh, dare I delve into uh, a, a possible conspiracy revolving around the exchanges? Obviously, if they uh, thrive on the volatility, well, you got to keep these cryptocurrencies more volatile. And guys, that is also where we're going to make our money too, in a volatile crypto market. So wanted to thank Andrew there for posting that. There is an end game, guys. One day we are going to see XRP command an exorbitant price based on real world utility. Once all is said and done, we've got to see a smoothed out crypto space. You know, this is the bumpy ride before we see those XRP prices explode. Now, I wanted to bring this up from the ISO GOAT, okay? An older document here, uh, just basically outlining the vision that not only Ripple, that other companies and organizations have had 
for XRP, the XRP cryptocurrency throughout the year. So Ripple applies blockchain technologies to cross-border payments through the XRP ledger that we know. Worldwide time bank payments uh, are going to be going through Ripple Pay. This was the original uh, vision for Ripple back in 2011. Uh, it was called OpenCoin, as you know, created by Ryan Fugger. Uh, and th they used to call it Ripple, and then they, you know, th they, they rebranded it to XRP over the years. Even if the company Ripple developed the Ripple ledger, the two remain conceptually separate. When the ledger went live, the company Ripple was endowed 80 of the total 100 billion XRP in supply supply and the developers receive the other 20. However, the company does not strictly speaking own the ledger. So that is uh, that goes uh, to speak back to that. Uh, well, the point from this morning's video when David Schwartz was saying, you know, I'm happy to see that, uh, you know, the ledger is supposed to be for the people in that developers are now developing on the XRP ledger more and more. I mean, this is 10, 15 years later after the original conception of the XRP ledger. So that's all positive, right? That's all good news. ISL Goat also brought up this uh, this document from a few years ago now, Steps Toward an Ecology of Money and Infrastructures, Materiality and Cultures of Ripple, specifically discussing money when it comes to the company Ripple. And, uh, you know, they delve into a lot of things in this paper. I will link this in the description of the video for you. Now, this was at uh, the beginning of the pandemic, okay, back in 2020, actually before the pandemic, technically, I guess uh, stuff was already happening in China. This was in January of 2020, but it was really before anything meaningful was happening uh, around the world. It wasn't a global pandemic yet. So a lot of this information, uh, I think, was brewing behind the scenes. And if you guys believe in some of the theories, the WEF implementing or orchestrating a financial crisis, a coordinated takedown of the financial system, well... It does all make sense that this kind of thing would be released at such a point in time. So let's not get deep into that, at least not yet. <laughs> Maybe a video for another day. The ISL goat there uh, bringing this up, though, and a very interesting observation. He says, gold, you say. So another, uh, just another screen grab from that document here. XRP is compared to gold, not as a substitute for interpersonal trust, but as the most liquid of assets in terms of speed, value, and exchangeability. So likening XRP to gold, not saying XRP is going to be backed by gold, but basically saying it is very much like gold in the way that, uh, you know, the world sees gold, the world is going to see XRP. And with volume, with billions of dollars of volume, trillions of dollars, potentially quadrillions, really, going through XRP, that is where we're going to see the prices really kind of skyrocket. And again, this is going to happen over a decade. This is not going to happen right away. I mean, I guess theoretically it could, but chances are it won't. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard this comparison, guys. XRP like gold. I also wanted to bring this up from Ido Farina. Ripple does suggest that XRP is like gold. So we have this document here from the Journal of Cultural Economy stating this. Okay, and we also have Ripple's own document. This document also refers to XRP as the vehicle currency with function reasons to be preferred over USD within the Ripple network. So this is another uh, older Ripple document that they put out uh, several years ago. Okay, like the internet, it is global and borderless. Commenting on XRP's utility, uh, the role of a bridge currency or a vehicle currency is traditionally played by USD in financial markets. And guys, now we're seeing that that is just not the case. I mean, with uh, what's going on with the BRICS nations, even with uh, you know BlackRock stating the US dollar is in trouble. So we're seeing this changing before our eyes. Within the Ripple network, there is a functional reason to prefer XRP. So Ido Farina, he does uh, give us the source here, a great uh, little interactive slideshow here that you can uh, flip through if you guys want to see all the slides available. I will link this tweet in the uh, in the description of the video so you can find it easily. But it's interesting to see when they get to this page here, guys, XRP as a vehicle currency, XRP in Ripple is like gold in your hand. It is an asset without counterparty and plays a role of a bridge currency between exotic gateways. This is similar to the role of the US dollar in exotic Forex markets. So XRP like gold from this Ripple document from years ago, but also guys from the Journal of Cultural Economy from right before the pandemic hit hard. Assuming this controlled financial takedown was part of the plan, implementing XRP as that solution, or at least as one of those solutions. Remember, in the midst of the pandemic, the WEF did release this report, guys. I keep, I got to keep going back to this because uh, they, they put out this report, Cryptocurrency is a Guide to Getting Started. And guys, they were projecting this, the Global Future of Council on Cryptocurrencies. And some of the cryptocurrencies involved here include, yes, XRP, along with some other ones. But I think it's very apparent. 
where they see XRP being used in this new financial system. A cryptocurrency akin to gold, even if it's not going to be backed by gold, it'll have the same meaning as gold has had in the world over the last, well, uh, countless years, over thousands and thousands of years, people have been trading in that asset. So will XRP have that same value proposition in this new financial frontier? I guess only time will tell, but that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.